Hey friends, my name is Yi and you're watching Yi Mr. Easy and welcome to a new video for design technology DT timber specific content and today we have 7.7 .7, which is equipment and processes used to make prototypes and by the end of the lesson you should be able to describe 7.2 sorry 7.7.1 tools and equipment 7.7.2 shaping 7.7.3 fabricating and constructing and 7.7.4 which is assembling so check out the pain comment for all the sam sams and we we'll move on now to the 7.7.1 tools and equipment we first we have hand tools and there are a variety of, use of, of useful hand tools for marking out cutting and shaping wood which includes marking gauge digital caliper and tri square where you can have a read of the description and this photo over here shows a piece of material and a pencil and a tri-square. Then we have machinery, which is we have a lot of electrically operated machinery that makes woodwork much quicker and easier. And the machinery includes circular saw, band saw, and pillar drill. And digital design and manufacture. Computer aided design or CAD software is useful for drawing part of the part of a product accurately and CAD sends information from, a, from the drawing to the machine such as a CNC router or a laser cutter. And the big advantage of a computer aided design and manufacture is the speed and accuracy when, which, which, uh, with which it can cut. And here's just a photo of the CNC router machine. Then we have 7.7.2 shaping which includes the drills. Like Chris drill, which is a, which has a smaller size hole, like four smaller size holes, and then advantage should be it's readily available in wide ranges of sizes. You can see, and but it, but it's only up to thirty millimeters, and a deep holes can block up the flute. And flat bit, it makes larger holes in wood, and the center spur gives an accurate starting point, and it's quick and fast, but it cannot be used to make an existing hole bigger. A fastener bit is basically it has a flat bottom holes on the wood to make like, the, the holes and a small center spur can make a blind hole with a flat base but this disadvantage should be it's slower than a flat bit. And an auger over here it makes deep holes on wood and can bore deep holes but disadvantage is that it has a super slow speed. Then we have hole saw which is it makes a larger holes on the materials. And you can make a large hole in a sheet of manufactured board, but disadvantage should be it's only good for thin materials and it, it only comes in a limited range of size. For jig, it, it's basically you put it over a piece of wood and guide a drill or saw to cut the required place, like here, the holes. And it's quick and accurate to make a lot of holes or cuts in the exact right place. And as long as the jig is positioned correctly, it's useful for batch production because once you have it, you can keep using it. Then we have cutting for cutting saws and these are harder to work with than a power saw. Like we have a saw here, different saws, like a tenon saw or a coping saw. And the hand saw is to use cut is to like to use to cut larger, larger pieces of wood. However, blade can bend so it must cut straight. And tenon saw is used for cutting straight lines with accuracy. And coping saw is it is used to cut thin pieces and can cope with curves too. And power saws over here, for example, scroll saw and jigsaw. Scroll saw can be used to cut shapes out of thin wood and manufacture boards, and can cut fine and details, but can cut large and thick pieces of wood. And jigsaw, the blade goes up and down to cut large thin pieces of wood clamped to a bench, and it cuts quite quickly and cut curves, but it's difficult to cut straight lines and blades can wander in thicker materials. Then we have pla uh, planing and chiseling. And planing is used to, cut, to smooth the edges of a piece of timber by running a sharp blade in the direction of the grain, or can be used at an angle to produce a chamfered edge. And jet plane, on the right over here, is good for making a long flat surface or edge. Smoothing plane is shorter and easier to handle on small pieces, or like small pieces of timber. And chiseling. It is used to remove timber, usually up to a cut or between two cuts, for example, in the production of wooden joints such as dovetails. 
then we have turning and abrading or sanding. I'll just skim through this. And it's basically uh, like um, a, an operator holds a chisel on the rest and glides it over a spinning wood to chisel wood away like this. Like it spins and then you just uh, like chisel it away and while it's turning. And it's primarily used for the shaping of a piece of wood, creating a pattern and rounded curves on the material. And for abrading, it's used to achieve a profile uh, shape or smooth surface finish by removing fine particles, normally the final stage in shaping the timber and done by hand or with the machine like belt sander, disc sander or orbital sander. Hand sanding uses abrasive paper such as sand or glass paper or files or rest which, is, which have a larger teeth than the file and can leave marks on the wood and serve forms which is similar to a cheese grater in appearance. Then we have carving. Wood carving uses shaped chisels to cut away the wood and it was once used a lot, but traditional wood carving has mostly been replaced by the CNC machinery, as it is much faster and more accurate. Then we have 7.7.2 again, shaping for the files, it's quite a long one. Like files, it has a range of two sizes and shapes available, and it's good for smoothing and shaping the sawn edges of a manufactured board. And the small teeth are quite slow on wood, which is a disadvantage. And rasp, and it has a large individual teeth and is available in different shapes, usually flat and half round and round. And the big teeth cuts, cut soft wood quickly and is good for rough shaping. But disadvantage could be it had the big teeth leaves mark on the wood that need removing with a, with, a, with like a further file or sandpaper. And surf form is basically a frame hole plate with pressed metal teeth rather like a cheese grater, which is quite funny. And it's good for rough shaping of soft materials and blade can be removed from frame and replaced. But this advantage should be it leaves a rough surface and it's hard work on harder woods. Then we have 7.7.3 fabricating or constructing. We have lamination, I'll, I'll skim through this, and it's a thin layer of material and like plywood. And as the plywood becomes thicker, the less likely it is to flex at all because the different veneers like glue onto it. This is referred to high cross-sectional stability and it is a desirable feature. And veneering is basically a thin layer of wood like lamination. And like plywood is made of layers of veneer laminated together. And it can, it can be applied to cheaper materials like MDF or chipboard to make them more to appear more expensive. And use of screws. Screws create a strong joint in timber and can be unscrewed if required. And there are two main head designs for screws. Flat and Phillips. And here's Phillips and here's flat. And a specific type of screwdriver is required to fit each of the different head designs using a countersink hole over here, like a countersink and a counterboard. Then we have nailing. Nails come in different shapes and sizes, and let's like say here's round wire nails, panel pins, and oval nails. And round wire nails do not pull through the thin timber as they have a large flat head, and panel pins for holding thin boards onto timber as they are small, often used in adhesive. And oval nails is less likely to split timber as they spread the grain less than round wire nails. And a hammer is used to drive a nail through the wood grain and is quicker than fitting a screw. So here's more nail over here. And then we have PVA. It's for wood and it can be used like preparation for G clamp and bench vise. You basically apply, apply a layer of, to the surface of the wood and spread it around. Advantage should be it sets in 3 hours and there's no stain, but disadvantage should be most iron waterproof. Contact adhesive, it's used in large sheets of material and breathing apparatus as, as it contains dangerous chemicals for the preparation and you can have read of how to apply it. Advantage is that it sets in 30 minutes and there's no repositioning after you've applied it because it's really strong. And then we have epoxy resin. It's for clean dry materials and it sticks, dis it sticks dissimilar materials with a rough surface like metal and plastic. And adhesive supplied in two parts and you have to mix equal parts of resin and hardener. You can see how to apply it. 
and the advantage will include joint dissimilar materials and it's good for joint fitting and like uh, joint fitting filling. But this advantage should be it's expensive. And tensile cement, it's basically is used for acrylic and must be applied to the joint after it has been put together. And here's how it works in the application. An advantage should be it creates a, a group bond between surfaces, but this advantage should be it gives off fumes which can cause illness. Then we have some joints, which includes butt joint like this, and it's easy to make, and it's just square ends glued together, but it's weak. And dowel joints, as we talked about dowels in a few lessons before, and its uh, advantage is that automated machines can drill the dowel, uh, the dowel holes quickly and accurately, but it's hard to line up the dowels accurately by hand. And the lap joints, it's easy to cut, but it's not very strong because it's just like a butt joint, but it just like cut off like uh, some materials. And then we have housing joint, and it holds the shelf or divider securely in the middle of the frame, and it pairs well with the corner lap joint. But it can be tricky to cut neatly uh, like a whole white board, and it's very accurate marking up and cutting level is required to ensure the shelf is exactly level or like uh, the same level. And mighty joint is like this. It looks good because there's no end grain shows and it's good for picture frames because it looks nice. But it's weak because it's just a butt joint joining at 50, 45 degree angle. And here's a mortise and tenon joint. Here's a mortise and here's a tenon. It's a good strong joint and it's good for joining a table of chair frame to legs. But it's time consuming to cut by hand because it's really complicated. And then we have this really beautiful dovetail joint. And it's very strong as lo it's, it locks everything securely and like interlocking. And it's good for a drawer front, a drawer front that will get pulled hard. But this advantage, this advantage should be it's very tricky to cut accurately by hand. And then we have wastage and addition lastly. Wastage, wastage processes the cut materials away to the required shape. For example, sawing, planing, and filling, drilling, and sanding. And waste costs money and has an environmental impact. So must be minimized whenever possible. Materials are often wasted due to manufacturing efficiencies, and this all can be minimized by purchasing new and efficient machines. Often businesses still use labor to save costs. And lastly, for addition, addition processes add material together. For example, assembling, gluing, screwing, and nailing. Then we have seven point seven point four assembling. I'll just skim through this. Like knockdown fittings can be put together quite easily and they are temporary joints. And natural root selection, uh, square selections ba 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 function similarly. And they can be dismounted with a screwdriver and which joints are mainly plastered in the shape of a right angled triangle over here. And it's quite strong. And to use it safely, you should take care when removing or adding them. If the structure that you are removing or attaching it to collapse, then you might be hurt and support the structure while applying or removing them and watch for any instability. Then we have the different assembling methods like the hinge. We have butt hinge like this, it's used for doors and it's hidden from the side when the door is closed and it, but it's hard to fit as an accurate slot needs to be cut. And flush hinge, it's used for small cupboard doors and it's easy to fit as there's no slot to cut but it leaves a gap between the door and the frame over here. And butterfly hinge, it screws onto the surface often as a decorative shape, and it's easy to fit as it screws onto the surface when the parts are lined up, but the whole, the whole like, hinge shows on the surface. And here's T, T hinge, and it's used for gates and shed doors, and it's a long bar grip for supporting the weight of a gate, but it sits on the surface so, that it, so it shows on the front of the gate or the door. And lastly, we have iron mongery, and it's a part or item that can be attached onto a product such as hinges, hooks, and locks. And there are lots of different sizes parts, so it's crucial to find the, the size that fits the product, so it has to be accurate and reliable, or precise. And if, it's, if the screws are too small, it can't fit onto the iron mongery, and if it's too big, the iron mongery parts uh, would just be hanging and it's movable, which is not good. And iron mongering parts may be sharp, so be careful not to cut yourself with it. 
and while screwing the screw from the ironmongery into the product, make sure you are being sensible while screwing it as it is sharp. And for quality control, make sure you screw in perpendicularly to the product. And here are just some photos over here. And that's it for this long video for 7.7 .7 specification for DT Timbers. And I hope you just found it useful and found it helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and comment down below if you have any questions or criticisms. And also check out my Instagram in the description for more daily content. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay safe and peace.